Is your family suffering from fighting or grudges? A lot of strife going on. These could be spirits that are affecting your home. And in today's video, we're going to help you identify them and tell you what to do with them, how to deal with them using scripture from the book called The Testament of Solomon. Hey y'all, Cousin Fai here. Got the Testament of Solomon with me. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the solution to fighting and grudges. We're looking here in verse 104, which talks about the 34th, which said, I am Adothith, I cause grudges and fighting. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to play a, um, a recording or a reading of a breakdown of this name and what it means. And that's what we're going to do. First of all, that's what's coming up next. It's going to look at the Hebrew letters behind the names, um, behind this particular name in this first one. And then in the second video, we're going to look at the uh, letters that are used to frustrate this name. But we'll come back to that in a second. This first one up again is about um, grudges in general, fighting in general, um, what the scripture says about it. And it also goes in and uses this name from the Testament of Solomon to gain some greater insight. So you go ahead and hit the like button. Um, be prepared to leave a comment along the way. And I'll be back after this short little clip. Title, Understanding the Influence of the Spirit Autotheith in Grudges and Conflicts, an Analysis of Hebrew Symbolism and Strategies for Resolution. Abstract. This dissertation explores the influence of the spirit identified as autotheith on interpersonal conflicts and grudges, leveraging Hebrew letter symbolism to uncover deeper meanings. Through the analysis of the name autotheith transliterated as Alephortet Wartaviotav, this study aims to understand how such a spirit can incite discord and how to facilitate its departure. The investigation employs various King James Version, KJV, biblical texts to frame the analysis and offer strategies for resolving conflicts instigated by such a spirit. Chapter 1, Introduction The name Autotheith as transliterated from Hebrew into Aleph or Tet Wartaviotav provides a symbolic foundation for understanding the nature of this spirit. By examining the individual Hebrew letters and their combined significance, this dissertation aims to elucidate the mechanisms through which this spirit might cause grudges and fights, and to propose methods for its removal based on scriptural principles. Chapter 2 Analysis of Hebrew Letters and Symbolism 2.1 Aleph Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, symbolizes the beginning, unity, and divine presence. It is often associated with the concept of oneness and the origin of all things. In the context of the spirit autotheith, Aleph represents the initial point of influence or interference, suggesting that this spirit might originate from a place of divine or cosmic disturbance. 2.2 War War serves as a connector or hook, symbolizing continuity and addition. Its presence in the name signifies a bridging or linking function, which may represent how the spirit connects or exacerbates conflicts between individuals, creating a chain reaction of discord and tension. 2.3 Tet Tet represents goodness or hidden good, often associated with protection. However, it can also denote something concealed or veiled. In relation to the spirit autotheith, Tet might indicate that the spirit operates through hidden or subtle means, making its influence less obvious but nonetheless impactful. 2.4 Tav Tav, the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet, represents completion, truth, and finality. It signifies the culmination of a process. The repetition of Tav in the name highlights the spirit's role in bringing conflicts to a final, often unresolved state, emphasizing the conclusion or fulfillment of discord rather than its resolution. 2.5 Yod Yod is the smallest Hebrew letter but carries significant meaning, including the divine spark, creativity, and action. It suggests that the spirit autotheith involves an element of divine or creative influence, potentially contributing to the initiation or intensification of conflicts through its actions or interventions. Chapter 3 Combining the Letters and Interpretations 3.1 Aleph Ortet 
This combination may symbolize a connection between the divine, Aleph, and hidden aspects, Tet, bridged by continuity, War. It suggests that the spirit's influence is rooted in a divine or cosmic origin that links hidden elements of conflict to visible manifestations. 3.2 Tet Wartav. This sequence represents a journey from hidden goodness, Tet, through connection, war, to completion, Tav. It implies that the spirit might lead individuals through a process of uncovering hidden grievances that ultimately culminate in conflict. 3.3 Yod Tav. Yod, representing action or creativity, leading to Tav, signifies the final state or resolution. This combination suggests that the spirit autotheth might induce action or creativity in conflicts, driving them towards a final, often unresolved outcome. Chapter 4 Scriptural References and Strategies for Resolution For Point 1 Scriptural Analysis Using KJV Biblical texts, this chapter examines references to spirits, conflicts, and resolution strategies. Key passages include Ephesians 6 verse 12, KJV, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse underscores the spiritual nature of conflicts and the need for spiritual warfare. James for verse 7, KJV, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This passage provides a foundation for resisting and overcoming malevolent spirits. Matthew 18 verses 15 to 17, KJV These verses outline a process for resolving disputes among believers, emphasizing reconciliation and confrontation. For point 2 Strategies for Dealing with the Spirit Warto Thith Prayer and Submission Emphasize submission to God and seek His guidance through prayer. As suggested in James for verse 7, resisting the spirit through divine assistance can lead to its departure. Spiritual warfare, engage in spiritual warfare as described in Ephesians 6 verse 12. Equip oneself with the whole armor of God to combat the influence of the spirit effectively. Reconciliation processes, follow the biblical steps for reconciliation in Matthew 18 verses 15 to 17 to address and resolve conflicts exacerbated by the spirit. This process involves private confrontation, mediation, and, if necessary, community involvement. Fasting and deliverance, consider fasting and seeking deliverance ministry to address deeply ingrained spiritual issues and to expel the influence of the spirit. Chapter 5, Conclusion The analysis of the name Autotheth through Hebrew letter symbolism reveals a complex interplay between divine origin, hidden aspects, and ultimate resolution. By employing scriptural references and strategies, individuals can address and resolve the conflicts and grudges instigated by this spirit. The integration of spiritual, practical, and scriptural approaches offers a comprehensive framework for understanding and mitigating the influence of such spirits in interpersonal relationships. Now, in that chapter, we got some practical ways of dealing with this spirit from the Bible's perspective. But again, we're looking at the Testament of Solomon. And when we're looking closely at it, what it says about it is that they are frustrated by these particular letters. And that's why we wanted to go in and get a breakdown of the letters of the um, assailant, for lack of a better word, to get some greater insight as to what's actually causing this. And I think it, um, this uh, computer calculator was able to uh, bring a lot of information out that we hadn't thought about um, as far as completeness, as far as um, meditating on these particular letters, not just writing them, but understanding what they mean and how they could play a part in dissolving uh, these issues or getting at the core of the matter. It says, Alpha and Omega, but we understand these to be Greek letters. And we also understand that Greek letters don't really have any power like the Hebrew letters. So we have to transliterate these back to the Hebrew. And I wanted to be sure that it was saying Alpha and Tav opposed to Alpha and Ion. The Ion transliterates to Omega. Alpha as in the bull and then insight as in the eye opposed to the covenant, which is Tav. So 
let's listen real quick to be sure which letters we're supposed to be talking about. And then we'll give a, a closer breakdown of the letters and how they're related to all of this. In the context of the passage you're referring to, it's helpful to examine both the symbolic and linguistic elements. The text you mentioned speaks of Lorto Thief, a figure causing grudges and fighting, and references frustration with Alpha and Omega if written down. Transliteration and Symbolism Alpha and Omega In Greek, Alpha, Alpha, and Omega, Omega, are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. They symbolize the beginning and the end or completeness. When transliterated into Hebrew, Alpha, Alpha, corresponds to Aleph, and Omega, Omega, corresponds to Tav. Symbolic meaning Aleph and Tav are indeed the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet, often used to denote completeness or entirety, much like Alpha and Omega in Greek. If the text talks about frustration with Talpha and Omega in the sense of completeness or ultimate authority, it aligns well with the Hebrew concept of Aleph and Tav. Text Context The passage describes Auto Theoth as causing grudges and fighting, suggesting a negative force or influence. The reference to Alpha and Omega being written down implies that this entity's influence or power is somehow related to or frustrated by the idea of completeness or ultimate authority. Transliteration Omega, Omega, transliterates to Tav, in Hebrew. Therefore, if the text had originally referred to Aleph and Tav, it would symbolize completeness or the totality of something, possibly a divine or authoritative force. Conclusion If the text originally used Aleph and Ayin, An, it might be emphasizing a different set of concepts compared to Aleph and Tav, An. Aleph and Ayin might represent specific spiritual or mystical ideas distinct from the idea of completeness or totality conveyed by Aleph and Tav. Given the context of the text, which deals with frustration related to a concept of completeness or ultimate authority, Aleph and Tav, An, would be more thematically consistent with the idea of Alpha and Omega. If the passage is about opposing or being frustrated by completeness or a cosmic authority, then Aleph and Tav would make sense as the intended letters in this context. All right, so now in the next one, we're, this next clip, we're going to uh, talk about the letters Aleph and Tav themselves. Now, you know, I use them on my channel. Those are the channel. Um, that's the avatar for my channel or the first letter and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet for this particular purpose to keep down some of the um, fighting and stuff that could go on. Um, so let's hear about the significance of these letters and then I'll come back and close it out. Practical breakdown of addressing the spirit auto thief using Aleph and Tav. In practical terms, to address and mitigate the influence of the spirit auto thief, which causes grudges and fighting, and to leverage the significance of Aleph and Tav as described, follow these steps. 1. Understand the spirit's nature. Spirit name, auto thief. Role, causes grudges and fighting. Frustrated by, Alpha and Omega, represented by Aleph and Tav. 2. Invoke Aleph and Tav for resolution. Aleph represents divine unity, spiritual authority, and the origin of creation. Use in practice. Meditation or prayer, begin by meditating or praying with a focus on Aleph. This involves contemplating the divine unity and seeking divine intervention. Affirmation of unity, emphasize the concept of divine oneness and ask for spiritual guidance to address the root causes of conflicts. Tav represents completion, truth, and fulfillment. Use in practice. Goal setting, set clear goals for resolving the conflict completely. Focus on reaching a state of truth and finality in the resolution. Establish agreements, aim to create lasting agreements or resolutions that address all aspects of the conflict and prevent future issues. 3. Practical steps to implement Aleph and Tav. Preparation. Create a sacred space, find a quiet and sacred space for your meditation and prayer, free from distractions. Gather materials, prepare any materials you may need, 
such as a journal for writing down insights or prayers. Invocation of Aleph Meditation, sit quietly and focus on the concept of Aleph. Visualize the divine unity and the origin of creation. Reflect on how this divine presence can help you understand and address the underlying causes of conflict. Prayer, recite a prayer or affirmation invoking Aleph. For example, Divine Source, I seek your guidance and unity to resolve the conflicts and grudges that trouble me. Help me to align with your divine order. Applying Tav. Conflict resolution, engage in discussions or negotiations with the aim of achieving a complete and truthful resolution. Address all aspects of the conflict thoroughly. Final agreement, work towards a final agreement that all parties involved can accept, ensuring that it addresses the root causes and prevents future conflicts. Combination of Aleph and Tav. Integrate insights, combine the divine unity and guidance from Aleph with the goal of completeness and truth from Tav. This means applying spiritual insights to create practical and lasting resolutions. Document the process, write down your goals, resolutions, and any agreements reached. This can symbolize the completion and finality associated with TAV. For monitoring and reinforcement. Regular review, periodically review the resolution and agreements to ensure they remain effective and adjust as needed. Continued invocation, continue invoking Aleph and TAV through meditation and prayer to maintain divine guidance and ensure ongoing alignment with spiritual principles. Summary. By using Aleph and Tav in a practical manner, you can effectively address and resolve the issues caused by the spirit auto-thief. Aleph represents divine unity and spiritual guidance, helping to identify and address the root causes of conflicts. Tav symbolizes the goal of achieving a complete and lasting resolution. Combining these approaches provides a holistic method for overcoming grudges and disputes, aligning with divine principles, and ensuring long-term peace and harmony. All right, so according to the Testament of Solomon, what we have to do is write these down to prevent the grudges or to stop the grudges and the fighting. Now, does that mean that we have to write them down each time? Y'all let me know what you think down in the comment section. Is it something that you can have as a pretty little plaque on the wall or is something that you need to write down each time that this spirit shows his head? Um, Y'all let me know down there in the comment section what you think about all of this. Uh, again, make sure you have the like buttons pushed. Make sure you have the subscribe button pushed. Um, and let's get ready for the fall festivals coming up. And shalom.